Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Hopefully everyone had a great day. Thank you so much for coming to our College and Career Office Summer Transition Academy Family Presentation. So we had the pleasure of presenting this to your students two days ago. So you will be hearing and seeing what we talk to your students about. I'm Tanya Tarosian. We also have Erin Kim here. And we um, also have Linda Kang, one of our other college counselors, She's not here, but we do have another college counselor. Um, so we will go ahead and get started. So welcome class of 2024. We are super excited to have you here. And I know it's kind of hard to be excited due to the current circumstances, but enjoy high school. It is going to fly by. Um, so just enjoy it, guys. I know it's hard, but we can do this. We're all in this together. So again, I just wanted to introduce ourselves. I'm Tanya Tarosian. I am your college and career counselor for last names A through G R. We also have Ms. Kang for last names G U through N and Ms. Kim for last names O through Z. So at Granada, your students have an academic counselor. Your academic counselor will help you with classes, your social emotional needs, intervention, and your college and career counselors are here to help with anything college and career related. So like I said, you have two supports, your academic and your college and career counselors. Okay, so middle school. I know you guys are super excited to be done with middle school. You're excited about high school. So let's just say middle school didn't go so great. You had some grades on your report card you weren't too excited for students. High school is a completely fresh start for you, okay? So take advantage of that. Now, everything you get in high school, all the classes you take will be, will go on your, um, holo oh, sorry, getting tongue twisted here, high school transcript. So your transcript is a legal document. So like I said, any class you take will go onto your transcript. That goes for your summer transition academy class. So once you're done with those classes, the grades you get will go onto your transcript and colleges are going to want to see your transcript. Some employers might want to see your transcript. So you have to make sure you're doing the very best you can in high school. Now, for middle school, um, remember how I said that it's a fresh new start, all your grades are gone and it's a brand new start for you? That is true except for two subject areas. So for your foreign language, your language other than English, if you took the Spanish one, let's say, or Spanish two, French one or French two, if your middle school was offering that, you can actually report those to colleges. Same goes for math. If you took algebra one, algebra two, or geometry, or courses equivalent to algebra one, algebra two, or geometry, those courses can also be reported to college. So foreign language and math, Again, if you're taking Spanish, took Spanish one, Spanish two, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, those courses can be reported to colleges, but colleges do not want to see anything else that you take in middle school. So the A through G requirements. I believe parents and students, you heard about the A through G requirements last week, but we wanted to talk to you guys about this again. The A through G requirements are really important. You're going to hear about this a lot from our office, from the academic counseling office, from everywhere. So Granada has aligned their graduation requirements with the A through G requirements. Why should you care? What does that mean? Well, if you pass your courses at Granada with a grade of at least a C, then you would have met the minimum requirement to apply to a four-year university, the minimum subject requirements to apply to a four-year university. So again, if you can get a C or higher, then you can apply to a four-year university. Now, each of the different subject areas have the different letter corresponding to them. So let's go over these different subject areas. Let's look at social sciences first. At Granada, three years are required to graduate. You'll take world history in 10th grade, US history in 11th grade, and then a semester of government and a semester of economics your senior year. And as you can see, the colleges are requiring two. So at Granada, you've already exceeded that requirement. English, straight throughout, we're looking at four years for Granada and for colleges. 
and that's English 9, 10, 11, and 12. We then look at math. So depending on what math class you enter in with, you will need either two to three years. So let's just say at middle school, you took Algebra 1 already, you'll take Geometry and Algebra 2 at Granada, and you would have met graduation requirements. Okay, now let's look at the Cal States. They're wanting to see three years. Um, and then the last two columns, the UCs and the private out-of-state schools are recommending four years. And recommending usually means you should do it. And our office also recommends, hey, if you're doing well in your math classes and you feel confident enough, we want you to move on. We want you to take four years of math. Let's look at science next. The two years are required to graduate. That's biology and then a year of chemistry or physics. So again, um, CSUs are looking at two as well. And then looking at the last two columns, three years are recommended. A language other than English. So depending on what you enter in with from middle school, you might need one to two years. So let's just say you took French one at your middle school, if they offered French, you would need French two at Granada, and then you would be done. However, just like with math, if you can handle it, and if you're doing well in that language, we want you to continue on, because as you can see, some of the universities are recommending three plus years. Now, a visual and performing art class. So you will usually take this class students in the 11th grade, and we have a bunch of options at Granada. We have drawing, ceramics, painting, we have choir, we have, um, cartoon and animation, we have drama, we have theater, so we have a lot of options available for our students. And with electives, now if you're enrolled in six classes every semester and you're passing everything, don't worry about the elective credits. Your counselor is going to make sure you have all the credits that you need to graduate and have all your elective credits. Um, the last few lines right here, so other we do at Granada require one year of a local option and you will be taking that students in the ninth grade, two years of PE, and then the summer transition academy. Those are not required for colleges, but we do require it to obtain our Granada diploma. So as you can see, the summer transition academy class, which ends tomorrow, yay, is checking off a graduation requirement. Now, the grades. You have to make sure, students, you are passing everything with at least a C, okay? Colleges do not like Ds. So the lowest grade you can have in your required courses is a grade of a C. Now, if you end up with a D in any one of these courses, your academic counselor will recommend that you take summer school. And students, you do not want to be stuck in summer school next summer. You want to go out and enjoy your summer break. So please, please, please just remember, get at least a C in these required courses. Okay, so preparing for the next four years, what are colleges gonna look at? So obviously grades are gonna be really important. Now, if you're struggling in any one of your classes, that's okay. Some of these classes might be difficult and that's fine, but we want you to ask for help. Now, if you need tutoring services, we have tutoring available here at Granada. Reach out to your academic counselor if you feel that you need support in any one of your classes. Um, colleges will also look at the strength of your curriculum. So if you're doing well in your classes and you want to challenge yourself, let's say the next year, you're like, hey, I really loved history. I want to take um, AP US history in 11th grade. That's great. We want to see students challenging themselves. So do colleges. We have honors classes, we have AP courses. Um, we also have the International Baccalaureate Program and the AP Capstone Program. These two programs start in 11th grade and we usually have an AP IB Exploration Night the second semester, so in the spring semester, and you will learn about these programs more then. Um, colleges also want to see activities, right? And we want you to do something you're passionate about. So we want you to find your passion here at Granada. So students, I know last week you had the opportunity to see some of the clubs here on our campus. You got to talk to the club advisors and then the students in those clubs. So find a club that you're passionate about. Um, join speech and debate. We have a great 
choir program, a great theater program. We have a great journalism class. You can be part of the yearbook. So these are all things you can do here while you're a student at Granada. And then outside of school, um, you can volunteer, intern, take part in summer programs. You might want to find a job. Um, now, given the current circumstances, we only want you to do these if they're safe for you to do so. We never want you to be put in harm's way because you want to volunteer anywhere. So just make sure if you're doing anything, you're doing it in a safe environment and that you are safe. Um, a lot of our students will ask us about volunteering opportunities. And at the bottom of your screen, you see a website we have on here called volunteermatch.org. That is a really great website for you to find volunteer opportunities. Basically, you go on, you will create an account for yourself, and what you do is you have to answer some questions. You will start off with listing what you want to do. So let's just say you want to tutor. You will put the area you want to tutor in. So if I live in Granada Hills, I would put in Granada Hills. And then you put the age range you want to volunteer for. So maybe that might be elementary school. So what the website will do is it will give you different volunteer opportunities. It will give you the name of the organization, a supervisor, phone number, or an email for you to contact. So if you're looking to volunteer, that is a great website to utilize. But again, like I said, do these only if they're safe for you to do so. Character. Okay, so this is really important because a lot of kids will think, oh, the colleges are just looking at grades. They don't really care about anything else. That's not true. Um, we want you to put your best self forward, right? Be responsible, be respectful, be a kind person. We want your peers to say nice stuff about you. Um, colleges might want letters of recommendations from your teacher and your counselor, so just make sure they can write really good stuff about you. And um, some colleges and employers might reach out to us and ask about your behavior or your discipline history. So just make sure there's nothing crazy in there that it's all good and we can tell them, hey, so-and-so is a great student, super kind, super friendly, just a great person here on campus. So again, we want you to put put your best self forward. All right, now keep calm and get good grades, right? This is true, however, our main priority, um, given the current circumstance, is your physical and your mental health. We are available for you. Your academic counselors and your college counselors are here for you. So if you guys need anything, we are just an email away. We will be available to meet via Google Hangouts, via Zoom. So just make sure you reach out to us because we are all here to support you. And then I'm gonna have Ms. Kim take it away for the next few slides. Okay, great. So, uh, you know, you just got to high school and we're talking about colleges and it sounds overwhelming and it sounds like uh, a lot of information. Um, and we definitely don't wanna overwhelm you. Our goal is not to have ninth graders come in and only think about colleges. Our goal is to inform you about what's available um, and we want you to know starting now so that we can prepare for the next four years. Um, every year we get uh, students coming in asking, you know, what can I do? What can I do to get in? Or what should I do? I don't know what kind of job I want or what kind of college I want to go to. And that's okay. We don't expect you to know when you're 13, 14 years old, right? So what we want to just talk about are options and what's available and what is, um, what is accessible to you. So in the United States, there are over 2,000 colleges and universities. Um, the most popular college that Granada students apply to is Cal State Northridge, CSUN, and that's in our backyard. It's a fantastic school. And the number one college that's uh, most popular in the entire United States is UCLA. So over 100,000 people will apply to UCLA every year. So Definitely California is, uh, it draws a lot of students. It's a great state. Um, however, I just want you to be aware there are so many options outside of California as well. And we're of course talking about once uh, this pandemic has passed and hopefully um, after COVID is uh, over, that's something that we can start thinking about as far as options um, and what else is available to you as a student. So. We will talk more in detail about particular colleges as you become sophomores, juniors, and seniors, but this is just so that you're aware of what's available. 
Okay, so you don't have to decide to go to college today. If you're not interested in college, that's okay. We still have four years to talk about it, um, but we still wanna prepare you. And if you do know you wanna to go to college or you have a college that you wanna to go to that you've always been dreaming about, that's great. We also wanna prepare you for that. So the different types of opportunities that are out there, um, of course, there's community colleges, there's the military, you can always get a job after high school. Um, but when we're specifically talking about the different types of colleges, uh, the California Community Colleges is always a great option. We typically call them a two-year school because it, on average, it will take a student two years to take the classes to transfer to a four-year degree-giving institution like the Cal States or the UCs or private schools. So the community colleges, you typically go for two years, take classes, transfer to a four year, and it is free for the first two years. So that is very appealing to a lot of students and families. Regardless of your income, whether it's very high or very low, uh, the tuition is free for two years, and then ideally you would be transferring. This option is always going to be available. The California Community Colleges option is always available. So whether you decide that today or whether you decide that as a senior, uh, we just want you to be aware that it exists. For the middle two columns, the Cal States and the UCs, those are the public institutions in the state of California. So they are funded by the state of California. The Cal States have 23 campuses. They do require the A through G requirements that Ms. Tarosian talked about, and you must have a minimum 2.0 GPA. So if you complete all the Granada graduation requirements with a C or above, you are eligible for a Cal State, okay? You are eligible for a Cal State. The UCs, there are nine campuses, so like UCLA, UC Berkeley, San Diego, Irvine, Santa Barbara. The nine UC campuses, they require a minimum of a 3.0 GPA. So the 3.0 GPA, um, you're mostly should be getting A's and B's in all of the A through G classes. Now, there are other requirements for the UC. They do have um, an essay, their application is a little bit more robust. Um, and the main difference is that for the Cal States, the eligibility to be admitted is GPA and a test score. Now, I'm gonna talk about testing in just a little bit. So it's very clear cut. There's no essays, there's no letters of recommendation. They don't look at the activities that you've been a part of. It's very clear cut. It's your grades and your testing and that's it. The UCs, it is more competitive to get into a UC. So your GPA needs to be higher. They are looking at you holistically um, to see what you've done over the last four years of high school. The private schools and out-of-state schools vary. So there are uh, so many different types of private schools. So just locally, we've got USC, Occidental, LMU. Um, there's just a lot of options. There, uh, in Northern California, there's Santa Clara or Stanford. So a lot of options here and out-of-state as well. So you're thinking about schools maybe like the Ivy Leagues, or maybe you're thinking about an out-of-state public school like University of Texas or University of Michigan or Oregon State. So there's so many different types of schools with different requirements. That's something that we can uh, address individually as you start to experience high school and as colleges start to visit Granada as well. Just a couple of um, organizations I want you to be aware of are the Western Undergraduate Exchange, and this is for uh, public out-of-state colleges that make, Calif that make tuition affordable for California students. So again, we'll go more into detail, but just know that these organizations exist. And then there's a group of colleges called the Colleges That Change Lives School. These are small private schools that give very strong merit aid. So if you're a strong student all throughout high school, you have really good grades um, and you've been involved and you like the small college environment, the CTCL schools are also a really good option. So there's a lot of controversy behind the SAT and ACT, a lot of anxiety behind that. High school students, uh, you know, take this test and the scores that come out, you know, they feel like the score will make or break. And uh, the great thing that has happened because of COVID is that the colleges have been forced to really question um, how they're going to utilize the SAT and ACT. Um, and so for this current senior class, the SAT and ACT are no longer required 
by pretty much all institutions, the UCs, the Cal States, the IVs, highly selective schools, out-of-state schools, nobody is requiring the SAT and ACT for this year. Um, and that's because there are limited testing sites, there's, it's very difficult to um, be able to register and actually take the test live. So um, that's something that's wonderful that's happened. Um, and in addition to that, what's happened with the University of California, so the nine UCs, so UCLA, Berkeley, San Diego, and so forth, the nine UCs have decided for the class of 2024, so the current ninth grade class will not have to take the SAT or ACT. Okay, so even though seniors don't have to take it for now, the UCs have dropped the SAT and ACT requirement for ninth grade students. So this is fantastic news. That means our ninth, I have a ninth grade student as well. So that means ninth grade students, you don't, if you want to go to a UC, you do not have to take this test. So there should be fireworks and confetti. This is great news. Um, however, not all schools have yet adopted that policy. We don't know what that's going to look like just because of um, the environment that we're currently in. But the good news is for the UCs, you do not have to take the SAT or ACT as a ninth grade student. Um, will they come up with another test? We don't know. Are the Cal States going to require it for ninth grade students? We don't know. Um, but it's something that as a current student right now in ninth grade, you don't need to worry about that. And we will address um, and keep you updated as you become sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Okay, so uh, something really unique to Granada, and that's um, something that we're very proud of, is the College and Career Office newsletter. And this newsletter goes out to every single student at Granada every single parent that's in our system, and every single staff member. So every Wednesday, you will start to receive the college and career newsletter. This goes out to about 10,000 people every week, and everything is updated as we go. Um, so, and I will show you a live version of this at the end of the presentation. But anything that comes out of the college office, whether it's a scholarship, or if it's a, um, an event that's happening that's college or career related, if it's um, a community activity, everything comes out in the college office newsletter. So that again, that newsletter goes to you directly to your email every Wednesday and every event, every scholarship, every internship is posted in that newsletter. So this is something we definitely want you to be aware of. Um, you know, there are students that have received lots and lots of external scholarships. And then I still get emails from students saying, you know, I have no idea where to look. It's like, oh, open the newsletter. There's, you know, four or five pages of scholarships listed every week. We also want to direct you to any resources if you've got a lot of time on your hands these days. Um, these are some books that we might recommend. So iGen is just kind of about um, the generation of our children that are growing up right now. So, you know, just being the digital age and the level of anxiety that students are facing um, has been increasing. So the, um, iGen is a really great book. Colleges That Change Lives um, is the book that I uh, referred to previously about the smaller private colleges um, that have really great opportunities. Uh, Where You Go is Not Who You'll Be by Frank Bruni is a really great one as well. This is um, just really about uh, discussing, is it the name brand college that makes your child successful or is it going to be those three factors that Ms. Tarosian talked about earlier? Thinking about academic success, uh, finding passion in something that you're interested in outside of the classroom and thinking about your character. Is it those three things or is it going to be that name brand college? And of course, we believe that you know focusing on the three things throughout the four years of academics, extracurriculars, and character is really what's going to drive your success more than the name brand of the school that you go to. Um, and this last website, Challenge Success, is also a really great site of just um, thinking about what that word means, success, and how that can be uh, translated in our lives and our students' lives as well. And the last resource that we wanted to talk about is SCORE. So S-E-O-I-R. SCORE is a new program that we've adopted this year. Um, and it is our college platform for research, for career inventories, for creating a resume. Um, and all things college will be housed at SCORE. So if we go to the next screen, and I will sh also show you a live version of this. The net, uh, the screen will show you three basic tabs at the top. So you can do a college search, you can create a list of colleges that you're interested in or my colleges, and then you can start creating a profile for your um, own activities, your academic uh, profile, and that can also translate into a resume 
um, if, when you start to apply for jobs. On the right-hand column at the bottom, anytime we have a college visiting us or we have an upcoming workshop, all of that will be listed and students would sign up for um, those activities on this site. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the newsletter and I'm gonna show you SCORE. Go to that last slide. All of our emails are at the bottom. If you have any questions, go ahead and email us, but let me show you my screen here. Okay, so this is the Granada website and under the counseling tab, you will see the college and career link here. All of our information is here. So if you need to email us or if you have any questions or uh, you want to make an appointment, we're readily available. And also under the college uh, and career page, we have uh, different tabs and information for each grade level. And then we have our weekly newsletter and every single newsletter, this is all from last year, is posted on this site. So for example, this is what our newsletter, a typical September would have looked like. So this is from last September. All of our upcoming events are posted. If we have a field trip, our field trip information is posted, any testing opportunities, visual performing arts. So we have a lot of events that go on. And again, this is updated every week. If you're a senior, this is your timeline. Anything you need to know about college is posted here. And then we have about 200 colleges that visit Granada every year. Um, so of course this year it will be virtual. Colleges are no longer traveling live. But when we have a college visit, all of that is posted and ninth grade students are welcome to come and uh, meet with our representatives that read applications for Granada specifically. So this was just this one week in September. And again, anyone that wanted to come to these college sessions, you could have signed up and you would sign up this year in SCORE. Service academies, if you're interested in the military, that was available as well. Um, Fly-in programs to visit college campuses. This, of course, is going to be on hold um, until there's more information. But I do want to show you the work opportunities. So if you're interested in um, the Mayor's Youth Council, if you're interested in animals or the fire department or volunteering somewhere, everything gets posted here every single week. So if you're looking for a paid job or if you're looking for a scholarship, so if you click on the scholarship tab, which is all the, always at the beginning, if you click on the scholarship tab, this is what it looks like. Um, and most scholarships are for 12th grade students. However, you'll see that some scholarships, the name, the date that it's due, the grade level, the amount, um, and the details. So all of this is posted in our scholarship section uh, of the newsletter every week. So this is something that you can start looking at now um, and familiarizing yourself with. As far as SCORE goes, this is the SCORE account for students. So when you log in, this is what it's going to look like. It, all students that were in STA received an email on Tuesday to create an account for SCORE. So all ninth grade students should have their SCORE account ready. Now, um, if you are a student and you were in STA and you did not receive that email, please let us know and we'll get that information to you. Just shoot us an email, let us know you didn't get your SCORE email um, and we'll send that over. If you're in 10th, 11th, and or if you have 10th, 11th, 12th grade students, we will send that at a later time. We did start with the ninth grade students because we were meeting in STA. If you go to my profile, this is Scotty Highlander, students can invite their parents. So parents can also have access to SCORE, you just need to be invited by your student. So if you um, are very nice to your student, I'm sure they will invite you. If you have any questions about that, you can email us as well. Under the college search part, you can just simply type in the name of a college. You will get information about that school, any updates. Now again, this is going to change because SAT and ACT will no longer be required. And we also have historical data for, for most colleges, not all colleges, but because UCLA is a popular school for Granada students, if you click here on analysis, we do have historical data on Granada students that have applied to UCLA, the green are Granada students that were accepted, the red are students that were denied, and the average GPA and the average SAT or ACT score for that Granada student that was admitted. So you can look at this. I don't want you to stress out about it because again, for our students in the class of 2024, that SAT score or ACT score is going to not be relevant. Um, but there's tons of information on here that students can start looking at. There's a career profile that we will go over with students, not at this time, but as you progress through high school, we will go over that with you as well. Okay, 
So this is just some information to get you started. What we do, uh, if you would like to ask a question, go ahead and type that into the question and answer section and Ms. Tarosian and I will go ahead and uh, answer any questions you may have. <laughs> 